confirmation here. And there we go. All right, let's get after it, right? Start rocking and rolling. And, uh, it's a cool spring morning or spring afternoon here in Utah, and it's a uh, it's been wonderful. I got a little rain, some sunshine, I get a little bit of everything, which is just about typical for for uh, springtime in Utah. So anyway, super excited to be um, on with you, and uh, I, uh, I'm really excited and, and grateful for the the opportunities we have at Asili that are that are present and um, and also in the, and what we have coming in the future. Um, I, I like to do just really briefly for people who might be new to a Sealy, just to give you a quick and brief overview of who we are as a company and what we what we stand for and what we do. And a Sealy is a uh, multinational company that's dedicated to health and wellness. Um, the word a Sealy is a Swahili word that means origin, uh, natural, or new beginning. Um, and we've adopted that to mean a new beginning for for us at Asili. and we're we're very much here to to really help our ambassadors uh, use the Asili platform to improve health, increase prosperity, and and ultimately maximize the the happiness that they experience in life. Now, the vehicle through which we uh, through our uh, through which we can help our ambassadors create. Uh, lasting prosperity is through products, products that are safe, they're effective, they're all natural, uh, products that carry these qualities, um, and they're really the representation of a fusion of science and, and nature. And, and so we're so we're excited about what um, what we have and what we're currently working on and developing. We take a really um, strong. Uh, and, and careful approach to product development because of, of who consumes our products, our friends, uh, our children, um, our loved ones. Uh, and uh, with this in mind, we're, we're very aware and cognizant of the care and responsibility that we need to take as we develop um, products uh, for, for people who are really interested in gaining an edge and improving their health and uh, and that's really one of the ultimate driving focuses of what our products uh, do and accomplish. We've uh, enwrapped the product consumption into a very simple uh, yet powerful cons uh, consumption system. Um, and the, this is really based off of what we consider to be four simple yet effective pillars for helping you attain uh, optimal health. Uh, and the system is called the core system. It's based around four, four simple principles, cleanse, optimize, rejuvenate, and energize. And you can see here our line of products. It's a small line, but actually kind of impressive for just being in operations, um, not quite two years. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and today, I want to talk a lot about um, optimization and rejuvenation. Um, so the, the terms optimize and rejuvenate, as you can see here, are, are steps um, and ideas of, of how to improve performance and help you feel younger um, and feel stronger. Uh, many of us today are dealing uh, with some increased anxiety, increased stress. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis has uh, essentially put the whole country into, the whole world really into a uh, quarantine lockdown situation. And, and uh, we're doing our very best to handle that with care and with, um, uh, and, and with responsibility, understanding that there are populations within our communities that are more, more affected and, and are at higher risks, and and so as we as we deal with that, that's put a little bit of um, undue, maybe undue stress and and some anxiety and, and uncertainty as we're trying to navigate uh, really new, totally new waters. Uh, at least for our time and for our period, and uh, there are very few people who are survivors of the Spanish flu and other epi epidemics, and 
Um, so we're doing our very best, and but yet nonetheless, we're st- we're dealing with stress, and um, and stress uh, in in a short term can be very positive, helps focus our our thoughts and our efforts, but chronic stress and long term stress uh, have deleterious effects, and and those are the things that we're we're trying to uh, uh, really drive and, and and get to today, and and uh, just to be very clear. Um, the, the stress that we'll be addressing today is um, m- more of a metabolic stress and not necessarily an emotional stress. Although emotional stress um, does does create um, negative impacts uh, on on your on your physical health, and a lot of that is due to similar uh, similar mechanisms. But today, I want to talk a little bit about oxidative stress. Uh, now, in this graphic, I, I show here a normal cell. Uh, that's then going through this cycle of being attacked by free radicals. And um, sometimes we are our own worst enemies where uh, the attack is coming from within based on on our own um, uh, just lifestyle habits, uh, our own diet, our own, um, our own uh, uh, I get back to the stress, uh, uh, our emotional stress and, and not sleeping well and not eating well. Um, and not exercising, living a sedentary lifestyle. You can see that over time in this kind of cartoon figure, how free radicals then damage and and uh, eventually will initiate uh, apoptosis or or cell induced um, suicide or cell death. Um, again, these these factors happen because of, of of things that some sometimes are within our control. Right now, we're dealing with. Um, emotional stress, uncertainty, and, and how we choose to manage that is is an important factor. There are some factors, again, that are within our control, but are uh, external and intrinsic factors, like <coughs> excuse me, like this picture of of Bogota, which is um, uh, showing and illustrating the the contamination, uh, the air pollution that's being caused here, and. Um, and, and in the process of that, there, there are certain uh, deleterious effects as we expose ourselves to uh, pollutants on a, on a uh, increasing, increasingly large and um, frequent and, and long-term scale. And then, of course, as I mentioned, um, our, our own lifestyle choices that we make and, and how we choose to uh, deal with things um, or just how we're choosing to nourish ourselves Ladies, you're not. Uh, this is clearly not um, a, a a thing that's exclusive to women. And by, by no stretch, of misogynist. There are plenty of of men who are guilty of this, and and so um, these these factors uh, are driving um, oxidative stress. So let's define a little bit about what exactly is oxidative stress and what causes it. Um, oxidative stress is really the um, overproduction and, and accumulation, if you will, of, of uh, what are called free radicals. And free radicals are uh, molecules that have unpaired electrons. Uh, and again, in this cartoon figure, uh, which by no means represents real atoms or molecules, but just gives you an idea of what, what a free radical is in the sense of how uh, you have a molecule that where there is an unpaired electron and then the role of an antioxidant then is to be an electron donor and to feel uh, fill this electron orbital and and make this um, a less reactive uh, uh, chemical species Uh, what causes free radicals well there's there are again uh, uh, natural there are natural processes that cause free radicals exercise for example will will create and induce um, uh, short periods of oxidative stress, and that's good, and that's good. Those are, those are molecules that are signaling um, muscle repair and, and muscle production. Um, there's, there are also uh, free radicals that are caused through um, energy metabolism or con- con- conversion. And so um, this can be, this can also be good, but when uh, our, our lifestyle choices start to um, uh, overproduce and, and we have overconsumption of energy. That's where we start to get an, an overproduction uh, of free radicals within our body, and um, so that's something that we'll, we'll talk about and consider as well. On, on the flip side, there are, there are other external and intrinsic factors, um, things that deal with um, pollution, um, air pollution, smog, um, 
and uh, of course, uh, cigarette smoke, uh, cigarette um, smoking is is uh, clearly something that is uh, deleterious to our health and, and and not healthy at all. But um, so we have to consider that as well as part of our part of choices and decisions that we make. Um, just on a side note, uh, this morning I went hiking uh, just up in the hills right above my home, and uh, for the first time in a long time, and I guess it's just been a while since I'd observed this, but uh, there Utah sits and where I, I live and uh, there's uh, a valley of of uh, uh, two different mountain ranges and uh, what can what can happen is there can be an accumulation of smog and inversion where temperature differences keep uh, pollution uh, pollutants um, kind of create a blanket of smog within the valley but due to the low traffic and low uh, <laughs> There's just no smog, and it's it's actually amazing and and, and beautiful, and uh, air quality is at, at its all time high right now. Um, I suspect that's uh, probably a phenomenon that's pretty um, similar that's happening throughout the world as as people are are working remotely or or in a quarantine situation. You probably see much much improved um, uh, air quality. You've probably seen many of those pictures of of pollution over China and how that's improved dramatically in just the, in the past couple months. And that's good. We probably needed a a, a global detoxification. Uh, I got this uh, slide from um, a journal that I was reading, an article that I read earlier this week, um, just about some of the what are what are some of the factors that uh, can contribute at least metabolically to uh, chronic chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. And, and a lot of that, again, is just dealing with uh, poor nutrition, oops, poor nutrition, um, sedentary lifestyles. Uh, you start to see, and this is a very gradual process. This is something that happens from one day to the next, but it's really uh, a manifestation of habits that, that we um, choose to create and, and persist in our lives. So, um, Type two diabetes, for example, is a is a is a disease that really, uh, really is a ten as a decade long type of progression um, <coughs> in development. Not something again that happens overnight, but literally, literally it is seven to ten years of of you eating poorly, you not exercising, uh, not sleeping well. Not not handling stress, um, and then those those daily decisions that have accumulated over a decade and a half or two start to manifest themselves with uh, different uh, phenotypes: hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia. Uh, you start to get fat accumulation around your belly. You're starting to weight gain weight. Your cells become completely resistant to insulin signaling, and again. Um, of the process of that uh, is going to be this this kind of vicious loop of chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. So, keeping all of that in mind, uh, what we do again at Asili is um, we're looking at we develop products that help people improve lifestyles and help people improve uh, deficiencies in their diets. And so, uh, what the product I'm going to talk about today in, is is a product that really does address um, uh, a deficiency in <clears throat> in um, diets where where you can improve diet, improve nutrition by by supplementing with the product. Now the product name is called Zero DX. Uh, it's a, a product that comes encapsulated, and, and um, what our goal here is, and it's a lofty goal, ambitious goal, and um, it's a goal that we we probably won't ever achieve because zero. Um, we're, we're targeting uh, no uh, uh, no chronic inflammation, and, and what we're uh, again that's that's a super lofty goal. Um, more realistically, what we're trying to do is just help you manage, control, and reduce. Um, and if you choose to make other decisions um, like uh, eating eating better, and what do, and we talked about that last week, uh, eating more protein. Um, Increasing your the good healthy fats in your diet and, and reducing the, your carbohydrate consumption, you can a, accomplish a, a huge changes in, in a short period of time. We're talking 30, 60, 90 days. You can see dramatic improvements in in um, 
in uh, levels of oxidative stress and really within your metabolism. Um, and Zero-DX is a, is a tool in a, in a liver that you can, you can use in order to uh, help you achieve those kinds of goals because they do provide some, some immediate and some, um, some immediate relief and some immediate help. Um, Zero DX uh, is is a product that, that at its core is leveraging uh, your endogenous or internal your your naturally functioning um, mechanisms for for defense against oxidative stress, and uh, it, it's doing this by by strengthening, fortifying, and and um, helping. Uh, three three core organisms, well, two core organisms, two of your three detoxifying organisms, your skin uh, and your liver. Now, I'm going to talk about how Zero DX um, helps both of those, but in reverse order. So I'll start first with uh, the liver, and then I'll start, uh, and then I'll address how um, Zero DX um, strengthens and, and fortifies your, your skin. Um, a quick primer again, uh, antioxidants, there are two forms of antioxidants. There are antioxidants that you consume that are called exogenous or um, outside coming in. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then you have endogenous um, antioxidants. And these are antioxidants your body produces. Uh, and they, they're in the form of uh, different enzymes um, like uh, catalases, like uh, superoxide dismutase. Um, or there are also other endogenously produced uh, antioxidants in the body that are non-enzymatic, such as glutathione or ubiquinol, um, a form of CoQ10 that's really prevalent in the mitochondria. Bilirubin is another one. Um, exogenous uh, antioxidants or products are products are, are components or are antioxidants that we would consume from our foods uh, that, that um, our body doesn't produce. Uh, vitamins A, E, C, uh, polyphenols, which we'll talk about quite a bit, phytochemicals, which are similar but not um, necessarily the same as well. And then, of course, um, other certain certain types of metals such as selenium are, are uh, have antioxidant, um, antioxidant properties. Now, in the liver, there's, um, uh, I was reading in, in clinical pathology, hepatology, hep, hep, uh, there, there's really in your liver two, two ways in which your liver functions. Your liver is your, your greatest filtering and detoxifying organ uh, in the body. Um, and what it does is works in, in a two-step process. They're called phases, but we'll just call them, uh, just to be simple, they're, they're um, a series of different enzymatic reactions that will take, uh, for example, aromatic or um, xenobiotic products, pharma pharmacological agents are typically really high in this, uh, or are strong categories. If you're taking NSAIDs like ibuprofen or Tylenol, your body metabolizes that by going through this two-phase process where you uh, these chemicals are, are oxidized, reduced, and, and hydrolyzed, and uh, they form more water-soluble metabolites that are then uh, conjugated. Um, they're also, they're, there's more polarity that's introduced into these metabolites, um, which allow them to be more soluble in water where they can then be excreted uh, either in your, uh, through the kidneys and, um, uh, and then in the urine or through fe fecal matter. Uh, in that process, uh, this, these enzymatic processes, especially in phase one, there's quite a bit of, um, let's say quite a bit, there's like, not a quantitative way, but there's a, there's a propensity for free radical formation to occur here in phase one, um, and some as well in phase two. So how do we mitigate, um, how do we mitigate this? How do we keep our liver functioning healthy and well? But well, we have a trio of, of three different plant plant-based extracts, and they come from uh, milk thistle, uh, silymarin from milk thistle. Um, milk thistle has uh, some, some really interesting properties. Uh, these are the, the components that are involved in milk thistle. They're called oops, silymarin. I think I have an overactive finger here that's advancing slides too quickly. Uh, uh, and, and you can see that these, uh, these, these are long kind of aromatic polyphenolic compounds that, uh, that, that 
that activates certain genes. Um, they're also really potent electron donors. You can see in these these aromatic rings that there are extra electrons to go around, um, and they um, and as a and as a, uh, a result, they're able to donate electrons and quench or or scavenge uh, is another term that's commonly used to free radicals. Um, uh, Cilium marin, for example, uh, uh, activates um, phase two enzymes like uh, NRF2, which uh, will, will then upregulate glutathione production and um, other other endogenously produced uh, antioxidants. Again, um, it also uh, will will uh, scavenge by itself its own uh, free radicals and uh, as a free radical as an antioxidant. Um, you can see that it increases and upregulates other uh, enzymatic um, uh, antioxidants like superoxide dismutase, like catalase, uh, and of course, uh, as I've already mentioned, um, does, does, does its own um, antioxidant quenching. Uh, another plant enzyme that, uh, or plant extract, I should say, is, is curcumin from, from turmeric. Uh, this is often referred to as the gold, the gold herb from India. It's a it's a it's a spice that's commonly used in few foods, and um, it, it creates a very uh, savory, delicious um, flavor to foods that you're preparing. But curcumin, um, uh, through through in, in Ayurvedic medicine, has long has had some long held benefits and properties, and as we've uh, started to explore, uh, speaking from the scientific community, what what are the properties behind uh, turmeric? We, we look at different compounds like curcumin, uh, curcuminoids, uh, as as they're sometimes referred to. Um, and then, as we explored, well, what are some of the genetic targets of curcumin? And you can see that they're vast and they're many. Um, and this is a uh, 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 a a diagram that comes from um, Curcumin that's been that was uh, evaluated in terms of of different genetic uh, markers that are involved in in cancer prevention and cancer progression, and you can see again, um, curcumin has long been known to uh, activate and and and, uh, and and regulate other uh, uh, carcinogenic uh, or, or or cancer regulating genes like p fifty three. It deregulates and stunts uh, COX-2 enzymes or 5 LOX enzymes, uh, these, these, ant these inflammatory biomarkers and inflammatory genes. Um, it also upregulates, again, uh, NRF2 or, and really some of the other phase two enzymes that are dealing with, um, with uh, liver detoxification and liver, liver function. Um, well, I, I've mentioned this a couple times, NRF2 is, um, is, is a, uh, a transcription factor that, when when activated, will will upregulate genes and activate genes that uh, um, that have multiple functions. Our, our primary function in this product is this one: uh, detoxification through through the liver, um, and, and in particular, uh, glutathione. Oops, excuse me, glutathione production. But it's also involved in <coughs> in autophagy. Or this this uh, process of cell cleansing, um, uh, it also is, uh, and you can see some of the other ones: lipid metabolism, um, cellular redox. Uh, so it's important that you get, in times of stress and in times of need, that you you're properly activating. Excuse me, um, uh, this transcription factor because of the the wide variety of of. Uh, of things that it will affect. Um, a third element that's involved in, again, but really directed as, as one as a primary as a primary antioxidant and two as a, uh, uh, a phase one and phase two um, enzyme upregulator or green tea uh, uh, extracts. These are uh, and, and, and just to define what what we do and, and when we create extracts is we'll take. Uh, plants, leaves, fruits, um, uh, in some cases, stems, roots, um, and in the, in the process, the extraction process, and there's a variety of different ways, but a very simple way of thinking of this is exposing uh, leaves, for example, to 
um, to relatively high temperatures and, and taking from those leaves uh, components or uh, compounds that dissolve and, and are soluble in water uh, at those higher temperatures. And, and really it's a, it's a combination of, of temperature and pressure manipulation um, and if you, you know, if you're into the physical chemistry of it, you'll, you'll find that, um, when you modulate water, uh, with temperature and pressure, you can change the polarity such that you can, you can then take out from, uh, not, not water, not very water soluble components, uh, of a plant and you can extract that. And it's a, it's a very clean process and, um, it doesn't use any other organic solvents like hexane or, or worse benzene, but, um, uh, but just simply, simply by modulating the properties of water, you can you can do that. And and so we're not we're not doing whole leaf consumption in this product. We're taking uh, components out of that product uh, or out of that leaf or plant, um, and the plant part of the fruit or the root again, uh, and extracting and enriching um, specific uh, phytochemicals that have uh, very direct um, and, and measured and uh, and, and measurable results as a um, targeted results. So, uh, green tea, for example, is rich in catechins, uh, and in this particular case, uh, EGCG or epigallo, um, gallate catechin, gallate, uh, and and uh, these catechins, uh, particularly in the liver, um, have some very very interesting functions. And this is uh, a, an experiment or, or, or summary of experiments that were looking at the improvement of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So how do, how do green tea extracts, or in this particular case, green tea catechins, EGCG, how do they uh, modulate? Well, again, uh, they're anti-inflammatory. They uh, upregulate autophagy. Again, they encourage, meaning they encourage the cells to cleanse garbage out of them. Uh, they have some very nice antifibritic behavior and also uh, improvements in glucose and lipid metabolism. Um, within that, you can also see upregulation in superoxide dismutase, catalase, uh, glutathione. You can see uh, deregulation of other um, uh, inflammatory or, or uh, processes as well, and enzymes as well. So, so those are the three components whose primary functions are dealing with liver, liver health, and liver benefit. Uh, again, those are the the milk thistle, the curcumin that, or excuse me, turmeric from curcumin from turmeric, and then uh, catechins from green tea. We have uh, something that helps our product really kind of stand out from others, um, from from other other products that are available in the marketplace. There's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, outside of of just um, you know milk thistle curcumin and green tea. There are a lot of products that have that or those, those, that kind of combination. Um, but one thing that's unique to Asili and, and I think is extremely interesting um, is what we call the Asili DX blend. It's a blend of four different, uh, again, plant, plant-based plant extracts. Um, and you can see what they are here from, from uh, lemon verbena, rosemary, olive, um, and then the sulfur haponica extract from the fruit pods. Uh, the, these have a, a unique combination, um, uh, and that's been, been pretty, pretty studied heavily and, and, uh, from again, uh, following that pharma model, uh, pharma, pharma model of, of doing in vitro, um, uh, the in sit that the kind of the cell model to the animal, to the human model or, or, um, uh, uh, Following that, you'll see you'll see a nice progression of of, of data that show um, how this particular blend of extracts strengthens and fortifies your skin as a detoxifying organ. Uh, so there's a really nice multifunctional approach to um, a zero DX. You have on the one hand antioxidants that are that are driving uh, uh, detoxification, cl clearly just free radical quenching as as a primary benefit, but also uh, detoxification by upregulation through phase one and phase two enzymes. Uh, and then you also have uh, skin improvement through these, this blend of four different 
uh, for different plant-based enzymes. So let me talk a little bit about um, how how this uh, this this pair this not pair this this quartet of of plant enzymes or plant extracts um, help your skin. So first of all, uh, anybody who's lived in a in a metropolitan area knows uh, how pollution can negatively affect their skin. I mean, just in the short term, um, for example, when I go and visit Mexico City, I'm, I'm just picking on Mexico City. I don't, it's not because I hate it, it's just reality. Or for that matter, when I go to Seoul or New York City, Los Angeles, I can sense and feel um, my skin drying faster. I may be in a more, slightly more humid area, but uh, my skin tends to dry faster because there's more exposure to pollution. Uh, I also tend to break out. And longer term, there, there are other longer term issues um, with uh, hyperpigmentation, uh, increased wrinkling and loss of skin elasticity. So these, these effects are real, they're measurable, um, and, uh, but they're also preventable. <coughs> so what are, some of the, what are some of the properties of this uh, Sealy DX blend? And how, how does it, um, wh what are we trying to accomplish? What are the objectives by including this particular uh, set of plant extracts in a um, oxidative stress reducing uh, detoxifying product? Well, again, the, the plant extracts function as an exogenous source of, of antioxidants. So really trying to um, reduce um, and, and control oxidative and anti-inflammatory reactions that come from, uh, you know, pollution exposure, UV radiation, um, really trying to reduce and control uh, melanogenesis or this um, uh, hype, this, this, the skin coloring uh, phenomena that takes place in your skin. When you're exposed, for example, to UV radiation, you'll, you'll start to, um, you'll either get sunburned and then tan, or uh, uh, if you're like some of my kids, they tan and they never get sunburned. So it's, it's kind of a nice thing for them, lucky. Uh, but there's also some other, some other benefits. So it, the, 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 the point of, of these plant extracts is from the inside out to help improve uh, uh, other parameters of skin health, like uh, hydration, like uh, elasticity, like um, uh, like firmness in, in the skin, and these are all again kind of phenotypes of what's happening right here in the epidermis and in the dermis of the skin. We're trying to uh, improve this barrier, make sure that particles aren't um, entering and and passing through the epidermis and the dermis. Um, we're also trying to reduce, uh, again, the uh, hyperpigmentation that can occur and, and make sure that we're taking into check these, these uh, hydrocarbon receptors that, that get uh, upregulated um, as a result of pollution, but is also the main route by which uh, pollutants and contaminants can, can cause these reactions. All right. So looking at a study that was done in Italy in Milan, um, uh, there's 120 20 participants in the study. Um, and this is just an idea of what the level of, of pollutants, pollution was during the course of the study. Green, blue being really good, uh, this fuchsia, we'll call it, as being very poor. And uh, over time, you can see different, different contaminants, what those levels were over the course of time. So Milan, wonderful city, but suffers from air pollution. So participants were uh, encouraged to consume um, the uh, either a placebo or 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 a combination of, of plant extracts. And one of the first factors that that um, we measured was called FRAS, and this is a, a direct measure of of how how your body on a on a global scale um, can resist oxidative damage. Um, and so what you're looking at here is the, the level of frass versus uh, time. And um, I, don't think, I don't know if that's shown up well. Uh, and so uh, when, what you see is um, uh, just after, uh, this is 30, this is day 28. So within a month of consumption, your body improves 22% its ability to resist um, oxidative stress. And over time that, that improves and increases. So there's a, an accumulative, accumulative effect from 
from taking the product um, 30 days versus 60, and in this case, really three months, 90 days. Now, if we looked at what um, what this says as a function of lipid peroxidation on your skin, on your on the on the, the thermos of your skin, you can start to see that with time, you start to see a separation between the control group and the active group. Um, and over 90 days, it, that becomes a pretty significant, statistically significant uh, difference and improvement of re of uh, a reduction in lipid peroxidation. Well, in terms of skin barrier, um, what we do, one of the ways in which you measure skin barrier is, is through transepidermal water loss, um, which results in a drier, um, more typically more sensitive skin. So uh, again, 14, we're looking at time on the x-axis and y on, on the amount of water that's lost through, uh, through the epidermis. And you can start to see that um, you're, you're uh, losing less and less water uh, over time. Um, and you're, you're maintaining um, hydration and retaining hydration as a function of time. Uh, and this, the, the, what's curious is this is, you'll start to see a, a result of this. Um, if you were to measure and you had the tools to do so, you could start to see a significant result of that uh, just within 14 days. Now, how that how that translates into something that's visible to your skin um, that may not happen within 14 days, but something that's measurable with the right tools can happen. Well, certainly is, um, and I'll I'll show you some something that's kind of interesting. It's a little qualitative, but it's interesting nonetheless. Um, uh, the, our investigators also looked at um, some some really kind of fascinating um, uh, parameters with uh, with our uh, DX blend. Uh, they looked at skin elasticity. You could start to see an improvement in skin elasticity, skin firmness. Uh, your skin firmed uh, just, um, uh, it seems it seems counterintuitive that you would have um, uh, plastic uh, and elastic skin, but still have firm skin and there's, um, but you also, you also start to see a reduction in wrinkles. Uh, so the wrinkle depth uh, was decreasing by 20%, meaning that you started to see, see feel a little more plumping um, uh, and, and a filling in of those wrinkles. And then of course, uh, skin softness started to see some improvement in softness of your skin. Now I mentioned that there's this qualitative, this is the, just a questionnaire, a qualitative questionnaire. So don't, um, you know, you, you have to kind of take out it. It's bilingual. So some of it's in Spanish and some of it's in English. But what, what you're starting to see is um, the percentage of, of respondents that perceived improved hair, for example, better skin hydration, firmer skin, um, they started to see uh, a reduction in, in um, or uh, an improvement in imperfections like pores, like in large pores or uh, acne. Um, uh, also reduction in wrinkles and visible lines. So this is kind of an, a, an, a pretty, pretty remarkable thing that over the course of 90 days that you, you have uh, well over uh, uh, 80% 80, 80 of the, the population and 80% of the participants um, seeing and feeling um, feeling the benefits that uh, were were measured usually usually using some some, some nice um, some nice technology. So that's that's a great thing. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. What you're starting to see is an improvement in that um, that protective barrier, uh, your skin, which is really your first line of defense. So, um, oops. Uh, so, in, in summary, again, I got a. This is a bilingual presentation. Um, what you see with zero DX is uh, you start to see improvement in in oxidative stress. You see a strengthening of your of your liver function as a as a uh, as your filtering detoxifying organism. You start to see uh, uh, over time. You'll see improvements in. Um, uh, in, in your skin, and, and I think uh, so, sometimes the best way to talk about products is really uh, what those impacts have on on people who suffer from uh, excess uh, excessive oxidative stress, uh, uh, things that are really manifested in joints and in in um, in, uh, in in uh, uh, 
in your in your 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 skeletal muscle in in, in the sense of uh, not being uh, really having pain, a lot of like uh, arthritic pain, uh, pains within your joints, the inability to to uh, function because you you're dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of pains. People refer to this. Um, with as fibromyalgia is, is a really good example of a phenotype of uh, a disease state of, of of appearing to be healthy but really suffering from a lot of a lot of pain and um, some others are, are really manifested psoriasis and skin skin to skin ailments so uh, these these particular products is that this is really how um, this product functions really well and we've had some really amazing um, uh, uh, testimonials and, and people experiencing dramatic uh, reduction as a result of this anti-inflammatory, anti, um, uh, anti-oxidant uh, uh, properties of the, of the product. And it's a, it's a, it's a pretty fascinating, pretty fascinating thing. How do you take the product? There are three capsules. You can take all three capsules at the same time, or you can divide them once, a, once a day, with each meal, if you if you eat three three meals, um, it's, it's very um, uh, safe for teens and adults to use. Um, it's probably uh, not not suitable for children under twelve. Um, <coughs> not a lot of aging that's happened in, in the first twelve years of your life, and unless they're they're dealing with some pretty significant um, autoimmune disorders, there's probably no reason for for younger. Uh, a younger population to really consume this product. Um, so, if you have questions about the product, feel free to uh, put them in the put them in the comments section. Um, if you want to learn more about how you can try the product for 30, 60, 90 days, contact the person who who invited you to this Facebook Live. Let them know, hey, you're that you're interested in. Um, and learning more about uh, Zero DX, you want to try it, and, and they'll be more than happy to um, to uh, to get you get to get that product into your hands. Um, that's all I have for now. Um, you guys can uh, feel free to join me later. Uh, we're going to be talking in Spanish about the same product. So if you have uh, people that you feel would be interested in that have, uh, that are bilingual and speak Spanish, have them. Uh, get back on in about 15, 15 minutes, and we'll do this the same training in Spanish. Anyway, hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Uh, be good. And uh, we will talk again next week.